Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. I'm glad to see you're all really enjoying these Flight Sim videos. I'm having an absolute ton of fun making these videos for you. So in this one, I thought we'd do something a bit different. I thought we'd take the Airbus A320 and do some airline work. And I've picked Charles de Gaulle as the departure. That is one of the handcrafted airports that you get uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think it's in the standard edition, so everybody gets it. And I thought we'd head over to Cardiff. Now, Charles de Gaulle uh, currently on the live weather is pretty nice, quite nice weather over there. Uh, and back in Cardiff, the weather is, well, rather nasty, to be quite honest with you. Uh, so one of you or a few of you were saying, what's the weather transitioning like in the sim? In other words, if you go from one kind of weather to another, uh, how does it depict it? So I thought we'd take the flight and show you this. Before we set off and jump in the cockpit, I thought I'd show you on uh, on Navigraph that uh, Charles de Gaulle looks like this. We're going to be spawning in here at the X-ray gate in, I think that's Terminal 1. And then we're going to taxi over and depart out of 27 left today. That is the plan. We're uh, also planning to arrive in at 3.0 in Cardiff. And I'll be looking to pick up the ILS into runway 3.0 at Cardiff. That's the plan. As it stands, things may change. We shall see. Let's jump in the cockpit and get a fired up. Well, here we are. Welcome to the flight deck. We're on external power. As you can see, we'll have to fire up the uh, APU fairly soon. If I can actually remember how to do all that stuff. It's been a while since I've flown the Airbus, so this should be interesting. <laughs> anyway, so you can see what it's done. It's quite cool, actually. It loads the flight plan in. So even though it was cold and dark, jumped in the cockpit and then pressed the external uh, power... It actually loads up uh, the flight plan. If I can just get down to it here, use my cameras. And you can see that the active database um, is correct, which is all good. And if I go to flight plan page, you can see, there we go. It just pumps it all in. I don't even need to do that. That is so good. Uh, so taken out of uh, LFPG, which is um, the airfield one at the moment. 27 left is where we're taken out from using this Opal 1 Alpha, I think it was, departure. And then once we get to SFD, this is where we will need to be descending. Now, the thing is, in this pre preview build of the A320, there are some systems, that, that, there are a number of things that aren't working just in op. You know, there's a lot of things that are not working. I don't think they'll ever be working, quite frankly. I'll, I think they'll leave that to the study level, guys. Uh, but there are some issues, if you like, some preview build issues. One of them is the VNAV system seems to be a bit buggy. So what we'll probably end up doing is manually managing our descent because it doesn't actually tell us where top of descent is and where, sh where we should start descending at what speed and all the rest of it. So we're going to have to manually do some of this stuff, I'm afraid. Uh, so let's go to the perf page. It's put all that in. Transition altitude's already in there. And we'll do a flaps one... Uh, take off flex temp Pfft. I don't know we can put I don't even know if this stuff is actually modeled yet this uh, performance stuff yeah, it lets you put numbers in but is it actually managed I don't know uh, there's the climb page there's a crew cruise page uh, descent page and then there's the approach we'll worry about the approach stuff later uh, when we're in cruise um, the fuel predict so the predicted fuel according to Navigraph uh, was about, we'd need about 6 tonnes and we've got 7.2 in so that's more than enough fuel for what we're trying to do here uh, so back to perth base, so let's, let's get the aircraft set up uh, we've got the local barometric pressure on here, we're on hectopascals 1016 uh, over at Cardiff it's 1015 I believe, we'll leave it on arc mode uh, we'll leave it on that um, let's see what else do we want? So we want um, auto brakes on maximum for takeoff. Let's jump up to that page here. Uh, climb altitude. We'll initially climb out to, let's say, 10,000. All that's being managed. Auto throttle doesn't go on yet. Probably have to power it up first. Might have to do some of this. I can't remember the exact order we do things in the Airbus. It's been a little while, as I say, so I have to bear with me a bit. Um, all these lights are all working down here. I noticed that the uh, a lot of these things are in op, like the transponder, that kind of thing. The TCAS system is in op, sorry. And um, 
we've got the weather radar. I think this actually works, but you know, you normally don't put it on on the ground. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, parking brake is on. There's the flaps, speed brake, and all that good stuff. So let's go for an APU start. About the beacon on, just so the guys on the ground know that um, they can hear engine firing up. They don't start thinking it's us that's going to suck them into the engine bay. So that should start up. Um, there is a. Is there an APU page you can use, I wonder? APU. Oh, that's in all. So normally you can put the APU page on and watch it. Um, we'll just have to listen. Actually, we can go to external camera. Yeah, there you go. We can hear it far enough. Like I say, the weather here is absolutely fantastic. Paris is having a lovely day. You should see it in Cardiff. Well, you will see it in Cardiff. <laughs> it's horrendous. Well, it's not actually horrendous. It's really murky, quite low-level cloud. Okay, we'll know when this is ready, because it'll say APU available. There we go. So the APU's done. Uh, so we should be able to disconnect that from the power now. We'll put all this stuff on. Uh, battery master. Yeah. So the lights should be out on the Airbus. That's how it works. Um, everything else looks good. A lot of this stuff is um, is in up, so we don't need to worry about a lot of it. Um, the things that do work are obviously the lights. The, ma the major stuff works. Um, that's all good. Okay. Um, now, in terms of pushback, we're going to have to push back and take a left pushback so that we're facing that way which is east and then what we will do is we'll taxi to those buildings here we'll taxi down there and just past the building if you turn to left you end up at uh, I think it's Q4 is where you end up at so having got that stuff done we should be ready to start the engines I'm just thinking if there's anything else I need to do before we do that I don't think so I think we can just fire up and get a pushback. So let's see. So in order to start the engines, we need to, first of all, put the ignition into the start position. And then throw an engine two. Now these, because it's the Neo, this has got the new engines on it. And they take a little bit of time to start up. Uh, let's also see if we can get a pushback off this guy. A shift P, is it? Hmm. Well, that's not happening. The engine start, nor the uh, nor the pushback is working. So I'm just going to have to quickly figure out what I've done wrong here. Okay, I figured it out. So on the overhead panel, we need to turn on the APU bleed. Otherwise, it would get warm in here. But also, the APU bleed is required to actually start the engine because it's the thing that powers it up. So hopefully... Hopefully now, we should get an engine start. There we go. Actually, the engine audio is pretty good. For a default aircraft, it's pretty good. Just take a little water spool though. Lovely. Lovely. You just can't beat the sound of a turbine. Oh yeah. Okay, so back down on the And there's the famous Airbus. The famous Airbus pressurization noises. <laughs> so yeah, we're already on the engine page. Looks like we've got a good uh, engine start here. Um, so let's fire up engine two. Well, engine one. And see if that spins up. Yep, that's all going. 
So while it does that, we'll get on with other things. So I'm still getting used to all these cameras. Uh, so let's see, we've got... I've noticed also that whatever you do on one side, it does on the other. So these things are independent. Um, normally, you, could, you know, the um, first officer could set his own displays and often does. Uh, but that's not actually modelled. There we go. Now, I still don't know exactly how we're going to get a pushback from these boys. It's supposed to be Shift-P, but... Maybe I just need to take the parking brake off and then he'll do it. We'll, we'll try again with the engines running, see if we get a better result. Uh, so that's these strobes, nav logo. We can put the nav light on now. Tax light we don't need yet. The uh, seatbelt signs... It says, I think it says they're in op at the moment. Yeah, it looks like it. So the seatbelt signs are in op, smoking signs are in op. Decrease overhead sub panel brightness. Oh, that actually works. That's good. Okay, we have two engine starts. So now we will... Turn off if you believe we don't have to worry about that. Turn off the APU bleed. Turn the APU off. There we go. We're now running on engine power. See, I do remember how to do this stuff. Okay. Um, let's see if we can actually get a pushback from these boys. So I'll try again. Oh, yeah. Shift P's working now. There we go. So, yeah, it looks like... Um, it looks like he only actually operates once your engines are running, which is fair enough. Although I don't know how it's going to work if you want to do like a, a start on pushback type thing. That's quite cool actually, there you go, he's locked, let's undo the parking brake. And, uh, yeah, we're in, we're in charge of steering <laughs> with the rudder pedals. Okay, is he deliberately slow? Do I need to... He seems very, very slow, doesn't he? Parking brake is definitely off. I swear the parking brake was off. Okay, that, that helps. Honestly, I pressed the parking brake button. Oh, I know what it is. It's because I'm on the drone camera. Yeah, look, if I'm on the drone camera, I need to be on external. Yeah, the big difference between the drone and the external camera is the drone camera, you can't operate the plane in any way. Uh, whereas with the um, external camera, you can see I can actually do things. So we can't actually do control checks from the inside yet. So we'll have to ignore that. Is this guy actually going to turn us? Normally, with the GA stuff, when you push the pedals, push the rudder pedals, he actually turns you around. I suppose this will do, though. We could just turn right from here. I might just stop it, though. Oh, wow, that guy just teleported. Okay, he's pulling back. We'll put the parking brake on. I think he's in front of us one sec. Yeah, we can just turn out from here, that's fine. Alright, uh, anti-ice stuff. So we can get anti-ice on. We don't, I don't think we need the anti-ice today. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? Strobe lights can start from now. Tax light can come on. Okay, that guy's well and truly clear. I don't know if if he's going to give us a thumbs up like, um, like GSX does. But we'll start taxiing. Let's get back down again. That should be actually about here. I'll perhaps some buttons. Um, there's actually some camera options that you can like... Uh, there's a sit-up option which is useful for when you're just need to see over the nose a bit and there's like a land view which gives you a 
slightly more zoomed in uh, look. So they, yeah, they're kind of handy to just quickly see over the nose. stuff okay so we're going to be using well i say we're going to be using managed speed however like i say the the, the current preview version does have some issues and when we take off i think you'll find it has a tendency to go up like a rocket ship with a far like the vnav seems to be what's causing the issues it either descends too quickly or it ascends too quickly or it picks up too much speed and it'll blast through 250 knots below 10k which is um not supposed to happen so what we might do is just take off and um, I'll fly it manually for the sort of right hand turn and if it starts over speeding I'll have to quickly put it onto a manual airspeed and um, yeah we'll put it into like autopilot and that kind of thing auto thrust can come on now what else do we need like direct can come on ILS we'll have to deal with when we get into cruise uh, approach mode blah 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 so pilot one. Sorry, yeah, I'm just um, I am re-familiarizing re myself. I used to fly these things quite a bit, but it's been a while. It's like riding a bike; it comes back, you know, it comes back. Although, unlike a bike, when I ride a bike, I've not ridden one for a while. They don't tend to fall off. Whereas with this thing, <laughs> I may do something stupid. It's all part of the fun. It's external camera. Just to give you a little view of outside. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Do you notice as I put my um, GSQRL on the back? <laughs> my tail number. Yeah, so in this mode here, I can't actually control the aircraft, so you can see it's slightly drifting. Uh, but if I'm in external, I can. So we can have a look at Charles de Gaulle behind us, couldn't we? There we go. Get back on the straight line. Yeah, so this is one of the handcrafted ones, so it really is very detailed. And obviously, Asobo being a French studio. You know, there's a reason why there's so many robins in this sim. <laughs> and there's also a reason why this airport's in the sim. But it is well modelled, I will give it that. Apart from this bit here, which looks like a very steep ramp. Ooh, not sure what that's about. I think that needs fixing. Yeah, so this is the uh, this is the left turn that we want here. So you can carry on if you want to. There's a displaced threshold here, though, which we'll see in a second. But we can take off out of here. We've got massive runway. We're not exactly running heavy. I think we're on about 30% fuel. Not a particularly long trip over to Cardiff. Okay, so let's see if we can get the uh, landing lights on now. Strobe can go to auto. Um, wing. Wing on ice light. Oh, there's another little ramp. This airport's got all kinds of fun. Maybe it is in there for real, I don't know. So all the lights are on, nav's on, everything like that. Strobe, good stuff. Taxi light can come off to take off. And we'll line up. Is that runway 27? We'll identify the compass. I've actually got a, tail, a bit of a tailwind now. Only like a two knot tailwind, but it's fine. Okay, let's get this right. Final checks. Um, 5,000 is there. Let's put about 
to 5k. Uh, everything looks good. It's on maximum. Let's arm the speed brake. Just in case we need it. Brake is off. Flaps. Whoops. Flaps in position one. We should put the weather radar on. To map mode. You can even put the... Um, the terrain thing on that actually works. The terrain, I say I'll leave, it, I'll leave it on because when we get to Cardiff, the terrain thing works pretty well. Uh, right, okay, so we're going to be going into uh, flex mode here. Flex. We got, and then we're going to climb later. We're not going to use Toga. And we're taking off right hand turn, climbing up to 5,000. We may have to manually control the speed. Uh, Gear and flaps will come up fairly quickly. Let's bring a bit of power in. Engines are stable. Man flex. SRS set. Auto thrust. Speed's coming up. speed already. I'm going to, have to put the flaps up because the speed's getting out of control. I'm just going to manually control the speed. Oh, there's the terrain. Okay, speed's getting way out of control. Okay, it's ignoring me. Let's put it into autopilot. Maybe it'll behave then. now. Yeah, it's gone up to like 320 knots like a rocket. Which is just a little bit crazy. Quickly have a look at the drone camera though, so you can see the scenery behind us. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Just look at that. Look at that. Yeah, it's over speeding because I didn't put it to climb throttle over probably. Over that was probably the mistake over I made. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. Let's just pull the nose up a second and kill some speed. I think it may well because I didn't put it into climb thrust and that's why it all went horribly wrong. So I'm pretty certain that was my mistake. Now notice the way that the roll works, it's a little bit aggressive at the moment. Uh, that's a ridiculous climb rate right there. <laughs> well I'm having all kinds of fun with this. Let's, uh, let's engage V-speed mode. See if I can control the vertical speed. Oh my god, did you see that? V speed. That's a bit better. Alright. So, it's a combination of things. Um, me being very rusty with the Airbus and the VNAV being a bit wonky in this preview build. Those, that combination has led to some very interesting takeoff. So I wonder if we can go back to managed as we pass 10k now. We'll go to um, standard pressure. For the ladders, there we go, standard pressure. And we'll put the altitude all the way up to 360. Put it into managed mode. And we'll let it climb out as it sees fit. Meanwhile, turn these lights off. Not the lamp lights. This is why I um, this is why I left the passenger seat sign on, passenger belt sign on, because uh, quite frankly, the way this thing accelerates, it's like a Tesla. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, any more cleanup to do? Don't believe so. Oh, apart from I should have put that into normal. That's my bad. Check this out, they're a wonderful thing. Alright, while that's uh, while that's on doing its thing, let's have a quick look at the flight plan now. So we're now at BVS. And actually, does the flight plan mode work? Huh? The flight plan mode does work, look at that. Yeah, so you can see we're on the uh, Opal um, SID. We're taking a left there. So we're just going to get up to our altitude. That, honestly, the vertical climb is, is... It's just crazy. You know, it's definitely bugged, is all I can say. I think what I'm going to do is just... Make it a bit more comfortable for the passengers. We'll climb at 2,000 feet per minute rather than 5,000 feet per minute. Uh, so yeah, just bear in mind guys, it is a preview build. This is very, very much buggy at the moment. Um, but I'm pretty certain they'll get it nailed. For release. And it says like top of climb here already. So while it's doing that, let's have a look outside. Yeah, beautiful weather over Paris right now. Look at that. Just Paris in the background there. Absolutely gorgeous weather. It won't take long before we're into the climb. Okay, I shall let this thing fly up to the cruise and I'll pick it up in cruise and then I'll see you on the other side in descent. Welcome back guys, uh, we're just about to uh, start our descent here. Have we just noticed something actually? It has actually got a top of descent right there, I was about to show you where we are on the VFR map. You can see we've crossed over the channel, we've just got past SFD and we're going to start beginning our descent. Now, since this uh, is going to be a managed descent by us, and I don't know what rate we actually need, um, I'm going to control the descent, so I'm going to put it into manual flight manual descent sorry of 2000 and we're going to bring this down to 10k initially and it should there we go start to descend at 2000 feet per minute because if I put 10k in and tell it to manage descend, it will go a bit nuts and it'll start diving way too quickly uh, because it is just a bit of a bit of a preview bug, shall we say. So I'm sure we'll get that fixed. But so far, so good. Uh, let me just show you the, uh, the radio nav page, which has the eyeless frequency already punched in. It already loaded that in for us. Uh, the course is also set, which is 279. If I just bring over... Uh, the chart here, it says the final approach course is 2798, sorry, 
so I'm, I may just correct that now to 298. Uh, the decision altitude here is 413 feet. So we need to we we'll need to manually vector ourselves in because what will happen is at the moment it's going to take us straight in. So we'll have to manually vector ourselves over to here to get on course 298 uh, to, to land on runway 30. You'll notice that the um, ILS is on 110.7, which is correct here, and its code is ICWA. And from 8 DME, we should be 2,200 feet uh, from uh, from the runway. So we need to get down to about 2,200 feet at least before 8 DME, so that we can capture that glide slope in. We'll have to get the localizer first, of course. But let me just show you what I've done. Um, in the perf approach page so i'll put in the local q and h which is 1015 temperatures 18 down there there's a wind of two to zero eight knots nothing much transition is ten thousand feet decision height is 413 so i've punched all that in so yeah we should be we should be good to go we're uh, we're descending now and we have some altitude restrictions we have to be below 22,000 at cpt uh, wind is below 15,000. That's Compton, by the way. 15,000 at Abdul and 6,500 at BRI. And then Cardiff, yeah, we're pretty much in at that point. So we'll collect, we shall pick it up um, as we get a little bit nearer. We've still got a ways to go yet uh, as we're descending. And you can see already outside, you can see already just what it's like. Um, it's, it's pretty cloudy. In fact, it's very clear. It's a blanket of cloud, basically. So we'll be landing through the clouds. Um, hopefully, we'll get a visual on Cardiff fairly early. And, um, yeah, it should be a good approach. Welcome back, guys. Uh, things are fairly normal at the moment. We are four nautical miles away from Abdel. Uh, we're slightly above um, where we should be. Abdel was supposed to be below 15,700. Uh, we're actually on 18,000 at the moment so I've had to increase the vertical descent rate uh, because initially I thought I'd set it to 2000 it was only on 800 for a while so we we're a little bit above but we should be able to get that back um, if necessary I'll deploy the speed brake but we're fine we've got 33 nautical left at Bristol which is plenty now at Bristol what we'll probably do is we'll go manual on the heading and we'll peel off and head towards uh, Charlie Foxtrot 30 here so we keep to the left of that and then head into it. So we we'll vector ourselves in uh, towards the runway on the course that we need to be on. Uh, and then we we'll just need to make sure... Oh, hello. Not sure what that was. And then we'll just need to make sure that um, we're at the right speeds and all that kind of thing. And everything's armed. And then we can capture the localizer and the glide slope. So I shall see you as we get near Bristol. Okay, welcome back, guys. And uh, we are... Well, 20 nautical miles out now. I'm just descending us down slowly. Trying to get down to the um, glide slope capture altitude of 2,200, which is where we need to be. Uh, struggling a little bit. I think we'll chuck some speed brakes out. Let's see if that helps get us down a little bit quicker. Want to make sure we're, we're ahead of things, not behind the aircraft. Because, uh, like I said, the VNAV is the trickiest part right now. So I brought the speed right down to 220. We've gone 1015. The landing lights are all on. Uh, I've not armed the localizer just yet. What I'm hoping to do is intercept the localizer just around about here. Uh, but we're still... How far is that? We're still 18 nautical out, so we've got plenty of time at the moment. Uh, localizer should kick in. There should be a straight line roughly through here. Uh, in fact, we could probably arm the localizer fairly soon. I'll just let it get a little bit closer. And then we'll arm that. As you can see, it's a bit of a pea soup at the moment until we get below the cloud layer. But uh, we've got the brakes on medium. I'm just using the speed brake and then we'll arm that. Everything looks good. Actually, we didn't activate the approach. I don't know if we, don't know if we need to on this thing. Um, activate approach phase, confirm. Okay, we're descending, we should be fine. 17 nautical out from Cardiff. Let's just go down a little bit quicker if we can. Ok, 
Come on. There we go. Feels like you have to pull the buttons a few times sometimes. That's why I want to be there a little bit earlier than I would normally, because sometimes it kind of feels like it ignores you. And then you're, all of a sudden you're over altitude. Okay, so we'll um, on the localizer now. Let's put the ILS system on. And we'll slow it down a little bit. Get down to like 180 knots or so. On the speed brake. Still not down to 2200 yet, and it's decided it's not going to. Well, let's go back down again. Don't think I can get a first stage of flaps in the bar. I'll try. Here we can. That'll help with the drag. Come on, keep coming down. Okay, 14, 14 nautical out, remember it was DMA, DME 8, so 8 nautical out, we need to be at 2200, We're still descending but feels like very, very slowly. Let's give it a bit more speed. Come on, you don't need to throttle up. I don't understand why it's softening up, it should just pitch down. Crazy. I don't know, I don't get it. Like, if I'm telling it to do 1800 descent vertically, and it's only doing 500, and I tell it to speed up, it should, in theory, just pitch down. Actually, we can put the um, terrain on now. There you go. So now you can see, if I just show you where we are, now you can actually see where we are. I see the landmass here now. It's kind of cool. So the localizer's armed. It's a little bit early to capture it just yet, I think. Speed, V speed, heading. Might have to turn in. Alright, so we're at the right altitude for this. Again, let's see if it'll capture it again. We're still a little bit far out, but you should be able to pick it up around about here, I think. Let's have a look outside. Okay, so localizer is captured. We're going to go put the gear down and we'll arm the approach. You can see the um, localizer's coming across. And we are one zero away. Okay, we have gear down, three greens, brakes are on, whoops, what's all that, second stage of flaps, thank you. I am very, very early in terms of what I'm doing here, I would not normally do this so early, but as I say, because the aircraft is a pre-release and it does have some bugs. I want to be able to have some contingency. In other words, if things don't do what I think they should do, then I want to have room to adjust before it's too late. So I'm being overly cautious and getting down speeds and getting down altitudes ahead of time so that I can adjust if things don't happen properly. 
that's my um, approach to this. Okay, there we go. Yep, so the horizontal is coming across. We're at 9.2 DME out of Cardiff. ICWA is 9.4. ICWA is the ILS, if you remember, 110.7. And it said when we're at 8 DME, if you remember, 8 DME, we should capture and begin our vertical profile. It should happen very, very soon. can actually see the airfield though. Now notice there's a um, there's a wind, 23431. There's quite a crosswind. There's a 31 knot crosswind currently. So this could be quite a sporty landing. There it goes. See so horizontal vertical ILS is in. It's it's struggling a little bit to capture the horizontal. Uh, we need to bring the speed right down. Okay, our reference speed was 145. And there you go, it's pitching those up. Slowing it down. And we can bring all that stage of flaps in. Which will help bring the nose down a little bit more. Holy smokes, we are miles away. Okay, let's get some left rudder in. That was an interesting localization approach. Crosswind, oh my god. 100, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. Five. That was a bit early. Oh, it's gone to the left. Come on, back to the right. Good grief. That was very interesting. Yeah, it's, um, it couldn't have been the wind. It suddenly pulled very left and didn't want to steer to the right. Blimey. I thought that was going to be an interesting landing, but. So the horizontal ILS system seemed to be struggling a little bit. It was overcompensating for the crosswind, so it put us far too left of the runway. And then when we did sort of come in onto final, it all happened very, very quickly. And when it did touch down, it, uh, it sort of sheared off to the left a little bit, and I had to stick some rudder in, but not enough. And it eventually came back. Blimey. Okay. Uh, what do you want to go? I want to go over to the right, if I remember. I did. I did actually have a look at the uh, the plate. Let's get some APU going. Uh, tax light. Come on. Okay, we have traffic on the taxiway. It seems. Let's get a bit of clean it up. Don't we? Yeah. So off the flight director ILS. What else I need to do? Flaps are up. Come on, dude. You need to move. Can't stay there. The strobe should have gone off because we're on auto, so it should detect when you land and then... Uh, okay, bro. Looks like the... <laughs> it looks like the um, the ground crew needs a little bit of work. Shall I, shall I go around you? Is that Okay. Mind your, mind your head on the engine, though. <laughs> we sit back down to normal level. It looks like they've got a little posse waiting for us. Disarm the speed brake. We can... Turn off the terrain. And the... Weather radar. 
normally I would sort of look at checklists and do all this stuff, but it's not worth it when some of the systems aren't working yet. And frankly, that was a struggle enough as it was coming in. Okay, APU is available, so we can power down the engine when we get there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where these boys want us to stop. Um, okay, well, I'm just going to turn into here and hope that this is right. Welcome to Cardiff. That was a bit of an interesting approach. Between the VNAV system and the pea soup and me being a bit rusty, that was certainly fun. Is he worked? Does he want me to... Is he actually going to... I don't know. I don't know what he wants. He just seems to be waving like he's trying to take off. I <laughs> did. We'll leave him to it. Okay. Uh, off and off. APU. I don't know if we need to do... I don't know how you get the ground power to reconnect, actually. Or tell the baggage system to operate. I don't know if there's a thing up here. AI control. Checklist. Camera. Fuel nav log. Yeah, that's really weird. I, I, I don't know. There must be a way of doing it. Let's have a quick look at Cardiff. You've seen what a handcrafted airport looks like. Frame rates are a bit better here as well than Paris. But this is a default. Uh, um, I don't think Cardiff's a handcrafted one. Pretty certain it's default. It's not bad though, is it? It's not bad at all. Blimey, I'm quite happy with that. Frame rates are buttery here as well. Um, some of you mentioned, like, uh, in the... Particularly the, the VFR night flying video, that the frame rates were stuttery. It's not actually the flight sim that's causing the problem. Um, well, I say that, it kind of is. It's to do with OBS capture. At the moment, OBS and the preview build don't really shake hands very well. The, the build before the preview, the one that was like a full alpha that I couldn't show you, OBS would game capture it just fine. Um, but for some reason in this particular preview build, it doesn't play ball with OBS very well, and occasionally it just, even though you're playing and it's buttery smooth like it is now, this is like really smooth for me, it will record stutter into the file. And it's something to do with FPS synchronization, and a number of content creators have seen the same thing. That's how I know it's not me. Um, so yeah, the actual game, well, the actual game is playing really well, like this is lovely and smooth, but OBS will just randomly decide, um, I'm not going to record that at a silky FPS. Hopefully, in the, if we get another preview build or the final build, hopefully that will be sorted out. So anyway, that was, um, an interesting, to say the least. Turn all that off, we can go off. Interesting to say the least, uh, flight. That was my first Airbus flight for a while, and uh, you could tell I was really rusty. And also the VNAV system is interesting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do another one in the Airbus, another flight, and we'll pick somewhere else to fly, and hopefully I can uh, do a slightly better job of it this time, because that was definitely rusty. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video anyway, with my uh, shenanigans, and I shall see you on the next one. Until, until next time, guys, take care, and happy flying.